After many years of flying, I've uh, finally figured out how to get a blade balanced well enough so that for FPV you don't get the jello effect. The jello effect, as you can see in this video, is a slight rippling of the image, and that's due to the vibration that's coming from either improperly balanced propellers or motors, and typically it's usually the propellers that are a problem. Once propellers are balanced properly, then as you can see in this video, the video is crystal clear and you don't have the problem. So what I wanted to do was go through a video and just show you how I have balanced the props and the trick that I used to get them perfect so that if you're having the same problem or looking at doing the same thing you can avoid all the trial and error. The first thing we need to talk about is the prop itself. So here's a little graphic of a prop, this is what it looks like kind of similar to the one that we're playing with this morning to balance and we'll actually balance this one while we're on camera. Um, there are two things that we need to think about. The first one is the same one that everybody is aware of which is balancing the blades itself and this is where each of the blades have to be the same weight so that when they're on the balancer that they like a seesaw or like a scale they balance out and they're at the same level. And that's something that everybody does, and that's the way that I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. The step that people miss out is the next step, which is once the blades are balanced, you also need to balance the hub. Now the hub, because of the way that these um, things are built, they're not manufactured to really tight tolerances, which is why we have these problems, particularly on the cheaper blades. The hub on one side can be heavier than the other, and just like a car tire or a car wheel, if there is a little bit of weight on more than one side than the other, as the blade spins up, you actually get more and more vibration, and you'll hit a point where harmonically there's lots of vibration in the model on, on the frame. So. If we just go through an example of why balancing the hub is important, because you're thinking, well, it's close, it's in the middle, how much difference does it actually make? If you imagine that we have a blade that's been properly balanced, but there's additional weight on the hub on one side, and apologies in this graphic, I put a big blob on one side so it's easy to see. In reality, it's never that clear. Um, if we were to tip it onto one side, so that the tip of the blade was touching the desk or wherever you're, you're balancing the prop and let go, it will pull back to level because that additional weight at the bottom is acting like a big um, pulley to pull it all back so that it goes back to level. If, however, we look at that and we imagine that the weight is actually at the top of that hub and we try and balance it on the, on the balancer and we let go, it will fall over to one side and actually hit the desk. So each tip will hit the desk. So even if we've got it balanced, or we think we've got it balanced by balancing the blades, the hub will cause it to fall over to one side or the other. And that's the process we'll use to actually find out which side of the hub needs a little bit of material taking off. So now we've gone through that, what we'll do is we'll actually do it in real life. So this is the hub we're going to use. It's a little 7x4.5 prop. Use these on a lot of my models. Other kit that you'll need to do this, you'll need um, some very fine sandpaper, kind of 200 or more to, to do it, or you can use one of these little emery boards. I find this is actually really good. It just takes off the right amount of material on these soft um, plastic blades. Or if you want to balance the prop with tape, you'll need tape ideally of the same colours and it just makes it neater to put onto the heavier, uh, on the lighter blade so that it balances out. And you'll also need some kit to balance it. Now what I've used is one of these things, if the camera will zoom in, which are cheap as chips. Now the reason it looks like it's been run over by a car is because when you get these, they are not balanced themselves. So one of the things that you have to do is make sure that your balancer is balanced, which sounds crazy. So if I just pop the balancer on here, the problem that I was having was whenever I rolled it, it always stopped at the same place. And that was due to the fact that it wasn't actually balanced. So I carefully, by taking one of the sides off, I actually got it to the point where it would stop pretty much anywhere. 
and I did that for both sides and that's really key because otherwise what will happen is this thing will actually cause an imbalance itself. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go and we'll actually balance each of so, um, the, the props so that each of the props is actually the same weight so it will sit level in the prop. So we'll pop it onto the device Make sure that the, in fact I'll do it this way so you can see it clearer, is level and it's pretty clear from this that that is the heavier blade. So all I'll do is I'll put a bit of tape on here and we'll come back when it's sat level. So I've put this little piece of tape on the end and that's just the right weight so that when I put it on here it balances out. So what our and, and the trick of course is turn it upside down. <laughs> there we go, balanced. Now what we'll find is that although that is um, balanced and historically that's where I'd stop and I'd say right okay I think it's good enough we'll have um, we'll have a flight on that. You can notice that already we're seeing some behavior. So for example it seems to be slightly easier to position this way up so I can actually position it in other directions here and it will kind of stay. Whereas if I turn it around, if I turn, try and do the same thing, see that the blade fell to the floor. Similarly on this side, blade fell to the floor. Now if I turn it over again, if I try and do the same thing, it will actually pull back. Now that means that this is the heavier part of the hub. So because of that, I'm actually going to, using the file, is take a little bit of material off this side of the hub. So let me just do that and I'll come back and show you. So here we have the blade and you can see I've actually um, used the file to take off some of the material only very slightly. You can still see a slight lump of extra plastic on this side which is probably part of the problem. So what I'll do is I'll put it back on the balancer and let's see how close we are. Remember the heavier side is down here and that's pretty well balanced that's kind of just wandering around on its own. The heavier part is now on the top again It's slightly staying over. So the way to just fine tune here, if I try and put this blade at any position, it should more or less stop. Helps if I don't keep knocking the balancing kit. So that's pretty much staying wherever. If I flip it the other way up, it should still do the same thing. So there's level. There's one side, and there's the other. So now I'd say that prop was balanced and it's good enough for FPV. I put it into the spares bin and next time I have a hiccup with a black prop, I'll use this one. So hopefully that's useful for you. So remember, first thing you do, balance each of the blades so that it's level, then turn the kit upside down and just practice pushing it from side to side. You'll feel when one side is heavier than the other because when the heavier side is on the top, whenever you push it over, it will push the blade to the side. Once you've figured that out, take a little bit of material off the side that's heavier and try and keep trying it. And the way you know you've got it perfect is when you can put it on the balancer in any attitude and it will stay. So thanks very much for watching. I hope that's been useful for you. Please comment and subscribe.